hello and welcome. Today we are going to work on a watercolor initial monogram letter L. My name is Lisa so I of course love the letter L. There are all sorts of names out there that begin with the letter L. So L is lovely. There's all sorts of different ways to make a letter L. You can make it fairly blocky, you can make it fairly swoopy. We're going to go with the same general style that we've been doing the other letters with, which is to have a pillory shape for any vertical struts. So that piece. We'll put that piece in. What shall we do for this one? I think we'll put the cat up here. Alright. I don't know what it is with me and cat ears. ears look like. I always think of them as being straight on one side and curved on the other side. But then when I draw them that way they don't look quite right. See and now that I actually need my cat, my cat is going off. Well, that doesn't look right either. If we do curved in both directions, that's a little better. Yeah, a sleeping cat. Um, as much as I am challenged by drawing cats, I am also challenged by drawing dogs. So let me see if I can quickly find a model on here for a dog. All right, let's try drawing a little dog down here. It's going to end up looking like a cat, probably. <laughs> I try to give him little pointy ears to show more that he's a dog. Maybe if we give him a bigger black nose. And a short little tail. Will it look like a dog? I don't know. I can only try. <laughs> Alright, so. Got a cat. 
We got a dog. We got internal struts. And we'll just put some dots down along there. We'll put in some flowers. Alrighty. Alright, I think I'm going to do this one blue and yellow. So first off, we're going to do the inking. There we go. If I can figure out where I put my pen and ink. What are you guys adding to your letter L? Let me know in the comments. This up here. All right, I'm going to try to draw this cat in. Get this working. Alright, so far so good. Give that a moment to dry. I think I will go with ultramarine blue to go with the yellow. I want a medium sized brush. That one's good, but a little stiff. Alright, I think that'll be about the right size. 
maybe a little thick in there, but we should be able to make that work. All right, so ultramarine. Let's start over here. How are you guys doing? Are you having a relaxing day? Well, one of the nice things I like about watercolors is that whatever kind of other things are happening, when you're watercoloring, often you are able to just drift away into the watercolor world and focus in on what you are painting and it gives your mind a chance to rest and relax and find some focus and peace. So it's a form of meditation. And that then helps everything else that you do go more smoothly and easily. I'm going to want this a little more saturated and darker, so I'm going to do a second coat in a minute. Watercolor is a painting system of layers. The more layers you put on, the richer the color gets, and also, in general, the darker because you are creating more layers of pigment between the light and the paper so the light cannot as easily get through to the paper and then bounce back out at your eyeball. Remember that watercolors dry lighter than when they first go down. So when you put down a layer of watercolor paint, consider that you may be wanting to put on additional layers. And that each layer will then make it get a little darker and darker and so on. Alright, we have the base of the L. Probably need a bit smaller brush to get the little leaves in, so I'll do that now. This is a permanent green light. You want to be careful about painting colors, sorry, next to other colors that are wet because wet areas will naturally blend together and usually in this kind of painting you do not want all your colors blending together into one big mushy area. Put some flowers in. Good with flowers to do each petal separately and then let it completely dry 
before you go back and work on more petals. That way they create that multi-petal effect rather than a blob of color effect. So I'll let those two completely dry before I come back and do anything else there. All right, colors to paint these things. All right, so that dog, I'm going to try to make a very light brownish, so I think like a burnt sienna. And we'll have to do the little tiny brush. And again, I have to be really careful not to get near that blue, which is still wet. It should be even a little lighter than this. We will see how light it dries. It's also a little yellower. So we'll try mixing in a little bit of this orange yellow. Being very careful about that blue. <laughs> I think I managed to do it <laughs> without getting too, too close to the blue. All right, now we're on to the cat. Cat, cat, cat. What color should I make the cat? I'm not getting any suggestions in the cat area. So I suppose I could also make it a ginger. I tend to like to do black cats. But black cats have the downside that they just turn into black lumps. And I'd rather not do that here. So I think we will also make the cat maybe more of an orangey color. And maybe put in some stripes. All right, so we'll start with an orange base, an orange tail. Leave the nose to be pink. We'll give that a chance to dry before we go in for stripes. All right, I don't think those blue flower petals are dry yet, so we will leave those alone. This blue looks like it mostly is dry. <laughs> I still see some glistening in there, but I think the center part of the pillar should be dry enough to be able to put in yellow for the core. So I'm going to go with this medium yellow here.
Ici donc. It looks yellow at the bottom. <laughs> I'm trying to fix this. All right, so we've got yellow down its length. I'd like to put in some gold highlights, but I need that blue to dry before I can do that. So let's see if this other blue flower petals is done enough that I can put in some additional petals without them all merging into one giant petal shape. Seems like it's mostly worked. Okie doke. Alright, let's see if I can put in the stripes for the cat. So we got a cat and a dog, we got some flowers, we got the blue and the yellow, and some little gold decorations. Some gold in here. All right, so a question is what to do in this area down here because it's sort of big to do dots. I suppose I could do larger dots. Or I could do some sort of a swirly thing. Let's try to do a swirly thing. We got a swirly thing. And now we should put another petal or three on our little flowers. Mm 
little under petals here. Alrighty. I am happy with that. I've got a letter in blue and yellow with a little cat, a little dog, and some flowers. And that is set for a particular friend of mine who loves cats and dogs and who loves blue and yellow. Let me know if you have any questions about creating these letters.